My name is Lieutenant Colonel Brenda Reed, and I'm the commander of the Granite Cadet Squadron. Today, I'd like to talk to you about homeschooling and Civil Air Patrol, and offer you a new model for consideration. Our objectives for today are first, to understand the needs of homeschooled cadets. Then the next objective will be to understand how CAP can directly support homeschools. We're going to discover ways to incorporate CAP curriculum into homeschool lesson planning. And we'll discover a new model for a CAP squadron. Our homeschooling journey started basically when my children were very young. I have three children. Uh, we were an Air Force family. We traveled all over the world. So homeschooling kept my children on track uh, as we moved around. We did all of those typical things. We went to air shows, they played rec sports, we did zoos, we had animals, we did museums, we had play dates, we, we even had the farm with the animals, and we, you know, we did the state fair. We basically were a typical homeschool family. But in 2002, our Civil Air Patrol journey began. Up until this point, despite living on Air Force bases, we had never heard of, air, of Civil Air Patrol until my husband retired and there was an article in our hometown newspaper about some cadets flying and our son had an interest in the Air Force and so we thought that would be a really good thing to look into. Two of my three children were cadets. My daughter, my middle child, Jennifer, she found her passion in Civil Air Patrol in uh, graphic design, website development. Today she has a master's in graphic design and she is a um, graphic artist for a large museum. My son Jacob, he found his passion in Civil Air Patrol. He was one of those cadets that just basically did everything. He set a lot of goals when he entered Civil Air Patrol and he achieved every single one of them. While he was a cadet, one of the things he did was judge a color guard competition. The cadet right there in the middle is the first, this is actually a picture of the first time he met her. Um, Kadi was a Mitchell cadet. She was very involved in encampment and at her home squadron. Lo and behold, the two got married. Now we also have future cadets. Uh, my two grandsons on the one side, they are continuing the homeschool tradition in our family. and. We'll see what happens with the little one. I homeschooled my children from the basically the day they were born until they went to college. Civil Air Patrol was a great addition to our homeschool program. The leadership that they, they received from it, the public speaking, the life skills, things that are very difficult to add into a traditional homeschool program. The kids are all grown. My husband and I, we still are active in Civil Air Patrol. What can happen when Civil Air Patrol purposely partners with homeschooling families? In 2007, the Civil Air Patrol Volunteer Magazine had an article about homeschooled cadets. I recommend that you, you find the article and re take, a, take a read of it. Um, see, see what families in 2007 were saying about the benefits of Civil Air Patrol partnering with homeschool families. What do homeschool cadets need? Well, first of all, they could use public speaking opportunities. Yeah, you know, we, we tried to, you know, give a speech in front of your family and, and you know, the, the heckling gallery was just a little bit much when siblings start constructively critiquing their, their, their own um, brothers and sisters. So public speaking opportunities in front of larger groups is something that homeschool cadets need. They're looking for leadership opportunities. You know, you, you, can, you can lead, but Civil Air Patrol is a ready-made leadership development program, so why wouldn't you take advantage of it? Group and team activities. Sure, at home you can do activities with your siblings, but when you start to get into those normal group and team dynamics, you know, the, the storming, forming, norming, you don't have that at home, and so this, this is something that homeschool cadets could benefit from. Life skills, test taking, study skills, event meeting planning are all things that homeschoolers could benefit from. You know, a lot of homeschoolers don't really take tests because if you're on a one-on-one -on -one teaching situation, the instructor, who is the parent normally, 
would know that the child understands the concept and then they just move on. There's no reason to take a test to see if they comprehend and can do it. Under they might struggle with some study skills because it's more of a mentoring, a one-on-one -on -one, or a very small group setting that they're used to. So a larger group can be a challenge at times. Cadets also need uh, confidence building opportunities. You know, when you're at home, you've got confidence. You know, it's your house, you're used to these people. But when you're out in a larger group with strangers, and you have opportunities to either, you know, public speak or lead a group or even deal with some of the, the confrontations that you may have. Over time, you will build confidence and homeschoolers need that. Problem solving, conflict resolution, you know, thinking on your feet, resolving a problem without having to ask someone else or have somebody else step in before you really need it. You know, our cadet leaders do this all the time. Homeschool cadets can benefit from the problem solving and conflict resolution opportunities in Civil Air Patrol. How about socialization? That's the one thing we always hear about homeschool. Okay, homeschoolers are very social beings. The difference being is that typically a child that goes to school in a regular setting and moves year to year progresses with pretty much the same group of young people, always their age and always in the same setting. So those, many times those children have difficulty speaking with adults or people younger than them speaking in different opportunities. They just are not as well equipped. Homeschoolers, on the other hand, because it's just how life is, they can speak easily with a stranger, with an elderly person in a nursing home. They can speak and help with a young, a young child and maybe teach them something. Those are skills. I'm not saying that children who go to school don't have them, but I'm saying that homeschoolers tend to be better at socialization amongst a large age range. So socialization really isn't a problem. However, Civil Air Patrol actually does offer another type of socialization where you're in a structured group um, format. And here's one, letters of recommendation. You know, when our, when our cadets go to college, wanna go to college or they wanna apply for the, the Air Force Academy or they just want, you know, to attend an NCSA and need a letter of recommendation. Well, many times those are saying, well, get one from your teacher. Well, when your teacher is your mom, it doesn't always work. Those letters of recommendation, and I have seen them in my time in Civil Air Patrol, you know, you, you, you know, when the teacher parent is saying, oh yes, this cadet is great. Well, you go, yeah, because it's your child. Of course, you're gonna say it's great. So being able to have an authority with an official letterhead that's not the parent, pr observe this child and give them letters of recommendation is a huge plus for homeschooled cadets. So we've talked about what the cadets need, but how about the parent? The parent has needs as well when they're homeschooling their child. Having been a homeschool parent, I can attest to that. You know, when you start out, it's a little bit scary. You don't know what's going on. You need some help. So our homeschool parents need mentors. They need experienced mentors. So a lot of times they go to a homeschool group to meet like-minded individuals who can help them with their homeschooling questions. They also need leadership and growth opportunities. If you think about it, the average homeschool mom doesn't work. She's at home full time with her children. Um, however, while the parent is at home teaching their children while very, very beneficial, they are not building their own up, um, career, they don't have leadership opportunities, and they don't have as many growth opportunities as a person, their personal development suffers typically because it's a hard job and it's a full-time job. Homeschooling parents also need some opportunities for themselves to build their leadership and to build their personal growth. How about curriculum ideas and opportunities for new curriculum? Parents are always looking for new ideas of how to, how to teach their children skills and knowledge and 
just different experiences. So they're always looking for opportunities and ideas. They want somebody also to partner with them in their program. Now they don't want an official contract signed partnership, but they're looking for someone to kind of come beside them, you know, whether it's that mentor or it's somebody, you know, another mom or another, another family that has cadets the same age as yours. They're experiencing not just the homeschool issues, but perhaps age related issues. So they're looking for people that can partner in their homeschool program. A lot of homeschool families are large and as most of you know the, uh, when you have an evening uh, cadet program a lot of times it's a rush you get home from work and you, feed, you, you, you eat a quick dinner and you're out the door because you've got to be there get set up and then when you get home it's late and you gotta wind down and then you've got to get you know get to bed and start all over the next day well when you have a lot of little ones or you have older ones that are not involved in Civil Air Patrol, maybe you just have one child in Civil Air Patrol, um, those nights, those squadron nights can be chaotic. It can be exhausting and it may take you a day or two just each week just to overcome what you missed that night. So family time in the evenings is, poor, is important for many homeschool families. How can CAP directly support homeschoolers and their families? Well, first of all, they can provide opportunities to meet the needs that we just discussed. Civil Air Patrol has an amazing STEM curriculum, both advanced and basic. Uh, in addition to the aerospace modules that we see that our cadets go through, if, you go, if you've never gone to the aerospace section of e-services and looked at their resource page and all of the materials that you can download, that in itself is worth the money you pay for your dues. The, those resources, uh, we have quite a bit and they're always developing new stuff. STEM kits, wow. What can you say about these STEM kits? They are amazing. We would so many, so many, they're free. I've priced some of these STEM kits that have come into my squadron and they're, you know, over $100. Sometimes homeschooling families can't afford that. But we have STEM kits and they're available. And homeschoolers, if they don't wanna go a traditional CAP route, the parents could be aerospace education members and have access to these STEM kits. Cadets have some, of, some needs as far as the test taking or the study skills. And so we need to give them patience and understanding. I know years back, I would, I would test some, some cadets in a previous squadron I was in, and the homeschoolers did require a little bit more patience with them if they weren't used to taking, taking um, tests. Understand, understanding that their experiences are different from the other cadets. You know, cadets who go to school have a totally different experience than a homeschooler. So homeschool families are looking for understanding and we can give them this. Guidance and mentoring, we can give that for both the cadet and the parents. We can meet those needs. And we can be careful about cadet clicks. You know, sometimes you have a, a local hometown squadron and when you are the only homeschooler in that squadron and everybody else goes to the same school, there tends to be a little bit of a click and the homeschooler could be left out because they don't go to the same school. So we have to be careful about cadet clicks as well as was something that Civil Air Patrol can work, can help uh, bring, bring the cadets from different experience together. Th those are some of the things that we can offer to um, homeschoolers, cadets and parents to meet their needs. How can we apply CAP curriculum to homeschool lesson plans. Now I know that when my, my two were in Civil Air Patrol, I routinely added it to their lesson plans. We have leadership textbooks, okay? If you think about it, a leadership textbook right there, you can also work on your reading. You can work on your vocabulary. You can, you, it, it's not just a self-study book on leadership. You can take this leadership book and there's history in it. You can bring in so many different pieces. They're gonna understand the material. They're gonna understand the background behind the material. They're gonna get a little bit more than maybe your typical cadet who is, in a, who is in a public school and is just trying to do the leadership text on their own in the evenings. We've talked about aerospace, the textbooks, the STEM kits. There's a lot there. We can, you can just take CAP 
textbooks, curriculum, and make a whole science curriculum out of it. You know, especially the cadet officers, the journey of flight textbook is amazing. Our safety lessons can easily fit into a CAP lesson plan that uh, you may, you know, and when I'm thinking lesson plan, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, what you, you also, you have to provide to your county or your umbrella organization. Character development, well, okay, same thing. And the stories behind it, and I will say the Chaplain Corps does a phenomenal job at this. Um, the stories behind it, you can bring so many different pieces of a regular curriculum into these lessons. CAP can uh, provide assignments, public speaking, presentations, group projects. These are all things that doing Civil Air Patrol, you can add to your regular homeschool curriculum by working Civil Air Patrol. Field trips, flying, extra activities, in-depth topics. There is so much of Civil Air Patrol that can be applied to homeschool lesson plans. So really, a homeschooling parent, if they take the time to look through the curriculum, they can, you know, apply it to a lot of things. So somebody who is spending six, seven hours in a public school sitting at a desk doing doing other work, and so by by and then coming home and trying to to learn this material, it also it makes our cadets retain it better. And if they're practicing and working through this material, then they're going to have a better grasp on those milestone awards because they have learned it over time. I promised you a new model of a CAP squadron. What if there was a squadron that was designed to meet the unique needs of homeschool cadets and their families. I can tell you that there is a home CAP school squadron that is designed to meet the unique needs of homeschoolers. And I'm gonna tell you about our squadron. So in April, 2019, a homeschooling group requested a field trip to Maryland Wing headquarters. Now at the time I was the chief of staff and I was thinking, What's at Maryland Wing headquarters that anybody would want to come visit? You have a lot of empty offices because, you know, it's during the week. But then I got to thinking and I, and I remember, okay, these are homeschoolers. What are they looking for? So I got together with um, our external um, aerospace education officer and who was a homeschool dad of his five children. And we started kicking around some ideas and we morphed this field trip into a field trip, aerospace expo. Maryland Wing has a static Cessna in front, so he did a pre-flight on the outside of the plane. It was just a really great day. So you can see from some of these pictures, some, you know, we, we, they made paper airplanes. They, they just had a good time. And we had a large group. And during that day, I, Colonel Williams did the bulk of the work working with the children on the aerospace piece. And I did a meeting with the moms, telling them more about Civil Air Patrol and my experience in homeschooling and my children's experience in CAP. And then I started talking to some individual moms about my dream of having a squadron made up just of homeschooled cadets. And the beauty of it is there at Maryland Wing headquarters, we have a large facility. We have multiple classrooms that sit open during the weekdays. One of the biggest issues for a lot of squadrons is finding space to meet at on a regular basis. Well, we didn't have that problem. We had a ready-made facility with Wi-Fi, plenty of room, everything we would need. We just needed the squadron. So in September of 2019, we began meetings as a flight with cadets assigned to a local school squadron. One of the moms that I spoke to she went and talked to a number of parents that she knew in the homeschool community. And as it turned out, we, we had about 12 children and their parents come together that fall. And we just, we started working with them. And as they, they did their three weeks and they decided they wanted to join. So we weren't a squadron yet. So we, we had them join a local squadron. The parents, we put into the Maryland Wing Headquarters Squadron because I was as Chief of Staff, then I was able to work with them on cadet protection and all of those level one items that they would need. So we were very fortunate that we had two, two of our dads who were active duty, one Navy, 
um, one Air Force. So they, they jumped in and helped with uh, drill. And we just started working on Civil Air Patrol as a squadron. Every cadet who joined started from the very beginning. So we wound up growing a little bit more. And in February of 2020, we had 19 members, 12 cadets and seven senior members, and we chartered as a school squadron. So as a middle school squadron, we can take children who are younger than 12, provided that they are in the sixth grade. Now, I did promise national headquarters, and I had a long chat with them, that I would not accept anyone under 11, because I'm sure that many of you have seen homeschoolers that they might be eight years old, but they're reading at a sixth grade level. Can you take my child? No, we set the limit at 11 if they are in the sixth grade. And so that's my commitment to Civil Air Patrol, but it's also good for the cadet because the material is is not, even, even some of our 11 year olds have trouble with some of the concepts and requires a little bit more help. We got some help from other squadrons along the way. We needed cadet officers as role models. We, uh, we were very fortunate to get a cadet who was homeschooled from another squadron come over and he just emailed me and he said, hey, I'd like to help. Can I just come over like a dual, you know, be dual hatted in both, in both squadrons? I said, sure, great, come on over. So Cadet Lieutenant Stigden came over and he eventually became our cadet commander and transferred into the squadron because it turned out our squadron was a lot closer to his home. And we also had Cadet Lieutenant Colonel Laura Midkiff, who, although not homeschooled herself, she was in college and our daytime schedule was was good for her. It And she came over twofold. One, she became the role model for our female cadets, but also she became the role model for Lieutenant Stigden, who had never been a cadet commander before. And so he had another cadet that was he was able to mentor, be mentored by her parents needed to see an actual squadron in action. You know, when we first got started, you know, we're trying to do things. And I was the only one at the time who knew what Civil Air Patrol was. And our parents wanted to see another squadron in action so they could get that visual picture. And so we had a squadron, Mount Airy Composite Squadron, who invited them over. The parents all went, they observed the squadron and they got a better sense of what Civil Air Patrol and a squadron would be doing. And we were just fortunate. We had lots and lots of wing support. Our wing commander at the time, Colonel Joe Winter, was very enthusiastic. The, the staff, whether it was, you know, our transportation officer or aerospace education officers, anybody who, who was in the wing staff was curious about us and they wanted to help in any way that they were possible, any way possible. So we didn't feel isolated. Uh, we, we felt uh, we felt welcomed and supported. At the time we were chartering, we were about to have a wing change of command. So I would have been stepping down as chief of staff looking for that new opportunity. So I became the commander of the squadron when we chartered. My parents and my seniors have joined and they take leading roles and they joined to be with their children and to help this squadron. So so we were pretty set with leadership roles. We're always looking for, for other bodies to help. And um, our parents are more than willing. In fact, when their cadet joins, I encourage the parents to at least join as a cadet sponsor member. Today, we have 39 members, 23 cadets and 16 seniors. So you can see over the last 18 months, we have grown by 20 members and we are officially the granite cadet squadron this is a group picture taken and it doesn't it's not everybody but it was taken at the time when we had our end of school year luncheon and where we recognized the outstanding achievements of our members so granite cadet squadron mar md 879 we meet during the weekdays that's what one of the reasons that we are different okay we meet on thursday mornings from 9 30 to noon and once a month we have an extended meeting. So we focus on that extended meeting. We focus on an in-depth topic. We, we might, it might be emergency services. Um, we had the, we had officers from the U S cyber command come and talk about cyber ethics. Right now they are very involved in the high altitude balloon challenge that, um, 
aerospace education office is working with and they've come and they've flown drones so that we go when we have our normal meeting in the morning we break for lunch and then we have an extended afternoon where we do things and this is actually really good because it allows us to focus in depth on a topic but it also gives the cadets time with the lunch and it's a little bit looser in the afternoon that they can build those bonds and friendship. We do assigned homework. I, I think I'm one of the few squadrons that actually has homework assigned to their cadets. So when we were doing the astro our astronomy STEM kit, they had homework every week. They were reading through the book and they were doing the questions at the end of each section. They are assigned speeches. One year we went through all of the people that our cadet leadership achievements are um, named after. And so each cadet was assigned a particular leader and they had to do a presentation on them. We did an in-depth study of Mars and many of our cadets had to do some research and do a presentation on a topic dealing with Mars or the solar system. And they will often bring in props, they do PowerPoints, the goal is to help them improve their public speaking abilities. And so before we did this, I taught a class on public speaking, tips and tricks. So after each time, after they give a presentation, then we will use, whether it's as a group where we will do a um, constructive critique or we will take them aside and give them a critique so that they can help improve their public speaking. We focus heavily on academics and life skills. While our cadets are learning to be ground team members, we have several that are very close to getting their ground team member three. So we do everything that a squadron is supposed to do. However, our focus is more academic and focused on those life skills. Our STEM kits, we are now getting ready to finish up our third STEM kit. We took a little bit of a break because of the high altitude balloon challenge, but we have worked on three STEM kits. And when we are done with them, they go into what we call a lending library that we can then loan out to our families. So if they're doing astronomy in their homeschool, they can use the telescope for a couple weeks so that the non-CAP siblings and the parents can work with a telescope and add that to their homeschool, pro uh, their homeschool program. Additionally, the cadet who has already been through the astronomy lessons through Civil Air Patrol can then become a teacher to their siblings. And you know, when you teach it, you learn it so much better. Team building, sports, that social piece, you know, on our PE day, our PT days, we will do organized sports, whether it's soccer or some other type um, athletic activity, just so that they can relax and get to know each other, but still have some, you know, have, have some friendly competition. We've got some bonuses. Okay, being, being a, a squadron that meets during the day that's not associated with a normal brick and mortar school. Okay, at our wing in Maryland, the classrooms are open during the week. We have three classroom, big classrooms available to us. Uh, drill, big parking lot. And so we can have a number of classes, especially when it's rainy and we can't be outside, we can break up into these larger classrooms. We can even, the, if we put two of the classrooms together and open up the dividing wall, it's long enough that we can do the pacer for the PT test. Our facility already has the Wi-Fi, the technology, we have computers, flat screens, and we have the support of the wing staff, both the, uh, the volunteer side and our wing administrator, who is terrific about making sure that the lights are on, the heat's on, and we're ready to go, the building's unlocked. We have a squadron office, so we can put our storage, we have our uniforms, just like any other unit would want. We have space dedicated to us in the wing headquarters. Our parents, for the most part, are willing teachers. They're already teaching their children, so they're very willing to help develop hands-on materials that are going to benefit not only their children, but also benefit the other children in the squadron. We meet in the daylight hours. Now, from a safety perspective, that is great. I don't have to worry about them drilling in a parking lot in the dark with any type of hazards. 
So daylight hours, we pretty much can do any activity with the exception of the telescope was a little bit of a challenge. So, so daylight hours really is a plus for us. We have a ready-made external aerospace outreach with the non-CAP siblings. They're there with the STEM kits, also just with the chill, the cadets coming home and talking about what they've, what they've done. So it, it, it is a great external aerospace outreach that as a squadron, we are expected to do. And families create other opportunities outside CAP as the relationships build. I have two families right now that after the meeting, they go off to another activity that benefits both, you know, both of the family's homeschool programs. There are other opportunities because what we are is not only a squadron, but we're, we're also like a homeschool support group morphed into one. So we have to actually delineate when we have a field trip that is not CAP related. Everybody has to know this so that there's no uniforms. They know they're not covered on our insurance. And we welcome that they build up those relationships because that's only going to benefit the squadron down the road as well. We've had some challenges, okay? We officially chartered February 27th, 2020. Two weeks later, we went under COVID lockdown. So as many squadrons out there, uh, we, we had the challenge of uh, virtual meetings. We needed cadet role models. Everybody started as a cadet airman. So as I said, we were able to have some cadet officers join and be the, become those role models for a squadron. We have lots of younger siblings. And because we have the space, I make it very, very open that, you know, if you wanna bring the siblings along and moms, you wanna take time in one of the classrooms that we're not using and teach your children, you're more than welcome to do that. And so it's, it's pretty common that, you know, I will, I'll see a cadet, a cadet's younger siblings doing their math with them and their mom sitting there helping them. As long as their parents are with them, I am fine with the younger siblings hanging out there because one, it introduces them to Civil Air Patrol at an early age. And it keeps the moms there in case there's a question and they have the comfort of knowing what we're doing. We do have a couple parents that are working parents. During the meeting, you know, they can take, um, if they have a conference call, they can go into a separate office, do their conference call during the meeting. It's not a problem. They're there. I'd rather them be there and seeing what our program is, take that break for their work if need be, and then come back and support us. So it, it, it can be difficult for some working parents. But we've had some great successes too. 11 of our initial 12 cadets are still in the program. So here we are 18 months after, after we officially chartered and of our 12 cadets, 11 are in the program, eight have earned their Wright brothers and we just had our first two Mitchells. So we are pretty excited. The cadets do well with their promotions. Each promotion, I have encouraged them to not use open book. You know, it's very easy to do that. But if you if you use an open book format when it comes to the milestone, the milestones, it's it's a lot harder. You have to go back and relearn. So sometimes it takes a little longer for them to get their initial promotion, but they don't have as much trouble when they hit the Wright brothers and with our two Mitchells um, as well. 18 of our 23 cadets have had orientation flights. That's both powered and glider. We have done both. So, and that's, again, that's during COVID. In our first year, we earned the Quality Cadet Unit Award and we are on track to earn it again for the second year. And we earned the A Aerospace Education Excellence Award both in both years. So last year we earned it and we just recently got our certificates for this year. Last year we did a summer open house. We're planning on another one this month and that's where we got a lot of our new cadets. Last year we also did a Red Ribbon Leadership Academy, which we're not gonna do this year just because we have so much else going on with the balloon challenge that we're working towards. We had our first awards luncheon and because we now have cadet officers, 
we had our first cadet change of command. So it was a great time. We recognized the outstanding achievements of all of our of all of our members. We had some we had guest speakers and some some official visitors and it was a it was a good time. We did it as a luncheon, so it didn't take up another weekend. It's just we had our morning meeting and then we broke for lunch and we spent the afternoon recognizing the achievements of our members. So how do we meet the needs of our cadets as a homeschooling squadron? Well, first of all, we pretest to evaluate their skills before they have their their curry test. So while they're in the the basic training flight, the, I will give them a hard copy pretest using one of the chapter one tests. And what I'm looking for is I want to evaluate their skills. How well did they, not how well they did answer wise, but were they able to read? Were they able to understand and comprehend? And did they understand what a multiple choice quiz test is? Because remember, some of our cadets had never even tested before. So the idea of here's your question and you have to choose the best answer, well, if they've never seen that before, they may not know what to do. So we have, so that tells me what I need to do to work with them to get them test ready. But it helps me evaluate their skills. Based on that and other factors, we'll have that honest conversation with the parents about our expectations and their child's abilities. My expectations, you know, that I expect them to promote, but I expect the parent to kind of help and partner along with us and that these are the things that your child is struggling with and how can we work together to help that cadet succeed. We have study aids on our website. We've created a number of study aids to help our cadets master the material. You know, we're not looking to check the box and just have them promote on. We want them to really master these concepts. So we have some study aids and I'll talk about those in a little bit. We have multiple testing officers so that if I'm not available, or you know, my cadet programs people aren't available, we have other parents that are willing to test um, the cadets. We have hands-on lessons, that's a big thing. We don't want a lot of lecture. We want hands-on so that they actually get into the topic. And we also offer classes and tutors for difficult concepts. One of those afternoon sessions, those in-depth topics I did on test-taking skills. You know, how do you study for a test? How do you, how do you take a test? You know, you know, when you look at like the learn to lead books, you know, there are, there are um, desired learning outcomes. There are l words in bold. There are questions in the back. There's all these things that you can do to be successful. And so we will have classes or tutors that will help with these difficult concepts. Okay, we also offer, as I've told you, assignments, presentations, speeches. The cadets run the cadet program with senior member mentorship. So my cadet commander sets the program, she has her vision, and with my approval, we talk, we, you know, we talk about what the squadron needs, what the cadets need, and how are we going to best support those cadets' needs. We tailor our lessons to homeschool experiences. So, for example, I'm, I'm the character development instructor, and if I don't think that the, the presentation works with a homeschool family, I may change the wording, I may change the video, just to meet the needs of our homeschool cadets so that it relates more to the experience that they are used to, and therefore they comprehend the material and the concepts better. We provide parents with curriculum and syllabus links for reporting requirements. So I have a weekly newsletter that goes out through the email with the weeks, uh, you know, the, the schedule, the uniform. And then if we are doing, say, when we start doing glider flights, well, then I linked to the glider, you know, the glider flight curriculum for orientation flights, the syllabus, so that the parents could take that as part of their package when they go to their county or their umbrella organization and go, this is part of what we're doing. My children are flying and here's the syllabus that they're working on. On our website, we have a whole page about the curriculum for homeschoolers so that it's, you know, it's public facing any homeschooler in the nation if they really want to understand what Civil Air Patrol has to offer for homeschools as far as curriculum, you can find it right there. 
I mentioned our study aids. Well, we have a whole page. Now this is a developing thing. We've got all of the aerospace modules, the first six, but leadership, we're only up to chapter four. And my goal with these study aids was that they would learn independent study skills. And this was to give them that those uh, ideas of how they can study on their own. But we offer a suggested schedule for reading. We link to the audio that's out there, um, Texas Wing and, and also the National Headquarters website have some, uh, some of the chapters for either aerospace or leadership in audio format. For those who have struggled, trouble with reading or want that reinforcement, you know, with an audio version, there's that. We have linked the best of the best for Kahoot for Quizlet. I've given them the links to the great videos that are done by Redberry Weo and Captain Roberts in South Carolina Wing for Aerospace Education. They have the direct links. This is what works for this chapter, you know, and it's also for the parents. The parents know, okay, it's a one-stop shop. Here's everything I need to help my child be successful. And in addition to all of that, we have, we have created uh, crossword puzzles, word searches, and we also have notes so that if a child is reading through a chapter, they can fill in the blank of these notes as they read. And it just gives them that little bit extra. And so instead of just blindly reading, you know, and starting to fuzz out, they, they know that they're looking for certain things and then it reinforces it as they have to write it down. So we offer all of those study aids for our cadets and they're on our public facing website. So really anybody in the nation is welcome to use them. You can find any of this on our website or granite.cap.gov. So it's pretty easy to find. Um, opportunities, recruit homeschool teachers as aerospace education members. We're looking at exploring the ACE program for younger siblings. As I mentioned, I have younger siblings that are coming and working on schoolwork. Well, what if we did an outreach, maybe once a month, twice a month, during our actual squadron meeting, we have the space that we do the K through six STEM program, the Aerospace Connections and Education that CAP offers to schools. What if we were to do that? Homeschoolers can be involved in this as well. So that is an, another way to reach out to the community, let them know about Civil Air Patrol, provide an opportunity for our cadets to teach in a larger group. And it also, you know, it's a great recruiting tool. You know, when you get old enough, you can join Civil Air Patrol. And then we want to reach out to our homeschool associations and our curriculum fairs, you know, right, um, right about lockdown time when the lockdown started, we had a table reserved at the local spring curriculum, you know, the start really of the homeschool curriculum fairs where we were going to have our curriculum, CAP curriculum out there to show everybody what we have to offer. So those are opportunities that are coming up that we're going to be researching as far you know, in addition to the rest of what we've got going for our squadron. So if you wanna connect with our squadron, there's our website, our Facebook, we're on Instagram and we're on Twitter. So we do have a, a social media presence as well. And if you have any questions, feel free to email granite at mdwg.cap.gov. That email will go directly to me. And I look forward to answering your questions in the chat room. And uh, hopefully we'll see you around the nation. Thank you. Bye.